I have to cut back in time because in order to set this up, we were very fortunate to have recorded the Beatles. I recorded them twice. I did Baby a Rich Man and All You Need Is Love. On the um, All You Need Is Love, <laughs> they come into the studio and, and this time Lennon sits next to me at that well, you saw the picture of the console. It's a C-shaped console, and there's a little producer's desk, and he sat next to me, and there's a little tiny mic. And I wired it up so he could sing into the studio, into the headphones, while he was sitting there. And he says to the lads, and he goes like this, all you need is, and literally, you know, the, the, the song was in his head, and he knew exactly what he wanted to do. The lads go out, so George Martin walks out, uh, yes, I'll take this over here. Now, Sir George is very tall, lovely chap, very British, you know, very proper, lovely guy, by the way. And um, there's a harpsichord. Bam! That's his instrument. Mic's up, quick, go. Paul walks over in the corner of the room and says, What's this? It's a double bass. It belongs to my boss, Keith Grant, who was the chief engineer at Olympic and was an amateur jazz bass player. And uh, <laughs> he picks it up and starts thumping. He says, I haven't played one of these, but stick a mic on it. Okay, that's Paul sorted out. So if you listen to the intro of Jumping Jack Flash, you hear ding -a ding And if you listen to the guitar, it's going It's not in pitch. The reason it's not in pitch is because the basic track was recorded with Jimmy Miller's Wallen Sack, which was a little cassette tape machine put on the floor and all the stones sitting around it with a little snare drum with a brush. And that's how the basic track was recorded. Then we played that back and we, on, onto a small speaker, put a mic in front of it, a 67, and recorded onto one track of the four, and that's how we started all the rest of the tracks. And as a producer, what do you hope to see from the student musicians and the student engineers <laughs> that are going to be working with you? When I talk to the engineers about control room etiquette, what to expect in the control room, if you're an assistant engineer, zip it and open these. That's all you have to do. Be prepared to think two steps ahead of me and then ask if you can help to do something by thinking, all right, well, a really good assistant engineer is always thinking two or three steps ahead of what the engineer wants but always keeps he, himself, or herself right here. Don't offer an opinion unless you're asked. That's number one. As far as what I expect. I just want to ask you a question. Did Timmy ever record right-handed? No. No, no, no. He always played lefty. Not that I was aware of. Only left as far as I can ever remember. But, but that's an interesting question. I can imagine what he would be like if he played righty. <laughs> and do you ever have, or have you ever had any, like, problems with integrity with trying to choose a project or have you ever like, turned out a project because you haven't liked it or is it just a business, you know? Every day, and I also get CDs, I get stuff in the mail, and it's rare that I will uh, pick something like that comes down the internet, but there are those occasions when this does happen. Um, and you know what I listen for is the song. If the song is there and the performance is there and, and the artist is convincing, in his or her performance and delivery, I'm there. You know, I don't care if it's, it's an MP3 and it sounds like crap. It's the song itself. It, it, it's every producer's dream is to find the song, the song, the song. It starts with the song and ends with the song. <coughs> I can record this on a cassette machine. It doesn't matter if it's a great song, great performance. That, that's number one.